Hey, over there. Hi, Christine. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Let's see yeah. what, about where it goes and what me interesting too. things you can uh, have a conversation about. <laughs> Me too. It was it was really nice to talk. Uh, it's already been a few weeks, and and to come back and we just had so much to talk about in so many directions we could go. I think our our challenge is going to be more like you know keeping it narrowed in and focus and not talking about four thousand things, but only four things <laughs> or four hundred. <laughs> Great. 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 Well, welcome. Well, I really was interested in talking with you. Because I think your book, which I have in front of me, because we'll see if the Zoom thing freaks out. There, no, there it's not for now. I also I mean, I'm going to keep it in front oh, of Oh, look me. at that. You have one. <laughs> yeah, you know the trick. You know the trick of, oh, there we go. You That's better. The... You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to show you. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, amazing. You're using it. <laughs> so... The fact that, so I, sorry, I'm just jumping in here, but um, yes. because this was so exciting for me because I I joke in my books about how when there is a question at the end of the chapter or homework or, or you know, do this or then go do that. And, and then I joke that nobody does it. I mean, I don't even do it, right? I mean, I even write books like this and, and you don't do them. But I thought it was quite brilliant that again, like if, here, even if you don't read the words, you can see you've basically made like a workbook out of a book. Exactly. It's it's <laughs> it's really, I mean, I just the idea of just that, because I I have a book and then I have a workbook. And my workbook, I mean, it doesn't sell very well. And I tell mm -hmm. people to go online and do the online thing, blah, blah, blah. But if you think about it, I'm asking them to go do a separate a, additional thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, I, mean, I just first of all, I had a paperback, which was already pretty cool. I'm real, I'm, I'm more of an e-reader kind of guy, but Me too. <laughs> okay. But then here, you gave you, I have your paperback, and I just, and I, I literally, here, you're not going to be able to see this, but I literally have like a sparkly purple pen. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. There you go. I have these. Uh... These gel pens as well, always in different Me too. Colors. Me too. Yes. I love, I love <laughs> sparkly, colorful pens. I'm such a, I'm a total geek about sparkly, colorful pens. And yeah. I just, I mean, speaking of happy, I, I think it just makes it more fun. So that was really my, my first comment was that I am as guilty as everyone of not doing the homework at the end of a chapter in a book like this. And I just thought it was brilliant that you. It made it so easy to just answer and, and write there, right in the book. So yes. anyway, that is my jumping right into the actual book. Um, but but I, I just have one more comment. Well, I have yes. a million comments, but um, <laughs> because you have, I, I'm, a, I'm a math guy. I like math. I like logical. One of my favorite subjects in university with statistics i mean you could oh my god <laughs> i know you could think i'm a, it's I'm good crazy. people like you need to exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so you had happiness and then you had formula mm -hmm. as, as a title and math guy I, I, when i say math like these days i talk more about like i talk about the number zero a lot like if you write zero books or you you practice for zero days, right? That's nothing. Zero is nothing. Whereas one is something you can build on one, blah, blah, blah. So I talk about very simple math. But you have happiness with which I think I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. This is more recently in my world. So there's like spiritual happiness and then math formula. Mm. And I would love to hear your your thinking on how that happened and by the yes. way I, we just jumped into stuff so could you actually back up a little bit and give a little introduction of who you are cool. yes I think um one of one comment uh, about that what you just said I think very similar so I'm also very 
spirit person also not too long ago maybe uh, three four years ago um but i'm a very logical person i like structure i like uh, taking things off my to-do list and just having okay i, I i'm a challenge person if you give me a seven day challenge i will do it if you give me mm -hmm. like oh here's something yeah. that you can do i'm like mm, i don't know so i think we're yeah. very similar oh, in that. and i think that's, that's, that's yeah. why it? this resonates a, a lot with me so i'm christy <laughs> everyone who doesn't <laughs> know me um Michael, if you want to try to pronounce my last name correctly, and I'm originally <laughs> from Germany, but I, I was living in all kind of different countries, and um, my background is marketing and advertising, um, and I thought this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and then more than a decade later, it turns out it's not, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do with my life, and now uh, that was about 12 years almost ago again, uh, so again, more than a decade, I laughed saying this it sounds dramatic it's more than a decade <laughs> but it's really I, I wanted to find something new I wanted to find something that I love doing where I communicate with people where I can help people where I learn from people and where I can give my energy because I'm quite an energetic person as you might say and see <laughs> but like meeting people and learning from them and getting their energy as well so I started working with entrepreneurs it happened um, I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because I never wanted my own business, but I uh, uh, started out as a coach and, and did all kinds of things. And over the past decade or so, <laughs> there is the word again, um, it formed into this Creative Startup Academy. And there basically I'm supporting mainly solo solopreneurs in the first three years let's say also later on but mainly in the first three years um with starting out feeling a bit less overwhelmed with that and knowing what to do next um the marketing bit focusing mainly on low and low cost marketing um, because we're talking about solopreneurs that have more time as a currency rather than extra money and yeah. that's fine because you can do a lot with that and then also the health and well-being bit which i actually added at the beginning of this year um because i oh, think wow. it's really important and most people struggle with creating a work-life balance um in entrepreneurship and also i have to say it seems to be a cool thing to hustle and to to do a lot of work in this startup world and, and things like that. And I don't like that. I, don't, I want to be a Zenpreneur <laughs> and I want to be, I want to have a work-life balance. I want to have a life outside of my business. And I think everyone should. Um, and that's how I added that pillar, let's say, to the Creative Startup Academy. And amongst that, I also write books and like, you know, and like you showed kindly, the happiness formula is actually my latest book in that time of recording. I have more to come, of course, because I'm this mm -hmm. obsessed. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's also a bit of a story about why I wrote this because I went through a lot of difficult uh, challenges in my life. Uh, I had, uh, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, um, which led me into my search for happiness. And I make this story very short. I can talk about it for half an hour, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, but basically, it turned out three months after the diagnosis uh, uh, that I don't have a brain tumor. And it opened up a bit of a new life for me because I started reprioritizing life, re-evaluating what I do in my business and separating my personal life from the business life. Like I think everyone should, like I just mentioned. And um, yeah, also my path to spirituality, because and you you might like that because we're talking about spirituality. So the brain tumor was supposed to be um, where the pituitary gland is. And in the spiritual world, that's my my portal to the universe and yeah, the third yeah. eye, because it's behind the third eye. So apparently I'm more connected to the universe, which is lovely to know. And it just opened up that happiness chapter for me because obviously it's shaking everything up and you think okay well, probably I'm gonna die soon let's see what we can do uh turns out it's not and you're like oh okay that's good but have a look at life and and see what you can do and like I said I'm a very structured person so I yeah. I did uh, like a certificate I'm an official happiness facilitator certified even <laughs> wow. um with the Museum of Happiness in London um I've read all kind of books on happiness and then I come up with this my own formula because there's lots of models out there and stuff and but I wanted it to be not only the theory behind it but exactly what you said the people take actually action there and then yeah. so 
reading maybe everything and then start from the beginning and start filling in or start reading and filling in those questions um, on their own discovery for happiness. Yeah. Did you say there's a museum of happiness in London? Yes, there is. Um, it's a wow. it's a lovely place. Uh, so they they had they started with like pop up events, um, and then they had a proper thing a location established where they also run workshops, and it's a lovely community there. Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I have if if you're okay to talk about it, your your mm -hmm. brain tumor. Did mm -hmm. did you mean you 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 really did have it and then you didn't? Or it was a misdiagnosis. <laughs> it was or... a misdiagnosis. Okay. Yes. But the doctors okay. weren't very good in saying that because what they said is, oh, you have a brain tumor. Because originally I went, uh, so it was a very stressful time. I was, would say I was very close to burnout. Um, and But for more than 20 years now, I have um, ringing in my ears. So, okay. um, you know, tinnitus it's called. And yeah. I went to, after like 10, 15 years um, into doing all kinds of treatments, let's say, that they believed back then will help and didn't. Yeah. I went back to the doctors and they did a scan of my head. And that's when they said, good news, everything is okay with your ears, but you have a brain tumor. And I was like, what? And then they said, yeah. I can't tell you more about it because it's not my expertise. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, um, oh. bit oh. of a shocking moment. Mm. Yeah. Now I can laugh about it, not laugh, but smile. And I know yeah. everything happens for a reason. And it led to most beautiful things in my life, appreciating so many things and discovering new things and yeah. finding a balance actually that works for me. Mm. Okay. This is, I think, a really important topic because my uh, big moment was when my father passed away. Yes. Now, uh, Oh my God, almost eight years. Um, and that for me was a giant shock. It was it was my own you know version of my brain tumor and it totally shook me up and changed everything in my life. And within yes. one year I had uh, closed my company, moved to Europe and I became a writer. Any of those things would have been a big job on their own, but I did all three and they were, and I just did them because I had such a focus. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of towards happiness and fulfillment and meaning in your life all yeah. because my father passed away and I think mm -hmm. kind of related to your thinking about the brain tumor and thinking you have limited time I for the for the first time in my life and this is so naive and like innocent and almost childlike I thought for the first time oh my god I'm gonna die someday too mm -hmm. right because I think up until I don't know, until you realize it, you just think, oh, that's not going to happen to me, or oh, that's other people, or that's other people's parents, or my father will never die, I will never die. I don't know, I don't, people think differently about it, I suppose. So my question for you is, of course, we don't wish bad things on anyone. But why is it that it seems that most people only have this big change when there's this terrible exactly. horrific awful cancer brain tumors passing away dying death life yeah. sentence whatever how can the people listening who say oh i i sure would love that i would love that objective you know, happiness for example <laughs> oh but i don't have time or you know the other 42 reasons why they're not going to get there until then something terrible happens and again I would love to, All I would love for everyone to avoid that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then of course their priorities change. So how can we talk to the people yes. who don't want the brain tumor or their father dying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I and don't I, need to I, laugh I, about it, that, but. No, but I know, I know it's exactly yeah. that. Usually people, including myself, including you, including yeah. everyone I ever talked to need to have something dramatic and negative yeah. in that case. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can label it as you as you want. Of course, death uh, will happen. Like you said, everyone is going to die. Uh, depending on what you believe in, uh, you right. might right. come out at the other end in another dimension or yeah. I don't know. Um, however, we, we have the shocking moment, whatever that is, to, for ourselves or someone close to us that really shakes us and makes us wake up 
and do something. My message always is, you it's your life. It will end at some point, at least in this dimension on this planet, in this life that you have at the moment. And yeah. then you need to understand that you need to make the most out of that for yourself. It's not selfish to think about yourself and see what makes you happy. And there's an interesting experiment someone did, I know, that I know did, um, who said, okay, I'm going to live the next year as if it would be my last one. Yeah. So basically, um, he told himself, okay, in one year's time, I probably won't be here anymore. He was completely healthy and stuff. It was an experiment yeah. for himself. And he said, I'm going to live this next year as if it would be the last year that I have on earth. And yeah. he only did things that were amazing and challenging and all that kind of thing. And it changed uh -huh. his life completely. I appreciate this is quite extreme. I yeah. think we need to be a bit more practical because you know, people, we're in this rud. So one thing is to try new things. Try with something new that you've never done. Yeah. Try something that you're afraid of and try something like they say, outside of your comfort zone. But start maybe with something inside your comfort zone, but something that you've never done. Try okay. a new hobby. Um, just yeah. open up your brain to new options and new possibilities. You will discover things that you haven't discovered before about yourself and also about things that you can do. And you can start small with this. You don't have to say, okay, one year I do that. We all have paid uh, bills to pay. We all have to work, um, probably. If if not, you're a lucky person, maybe. Okay. If you, uh, although I have to say, obviously, money doesn't make you happy also in the book <laughs> but <laughs> it is of course doing uh, making your life a bit easier because you could dedicate your uh, time to save turtles or whatever <laughs> whatever you want to do so i would say maybe there's also if you want to start small there's something that's called a death meditation that's quite drastic uh, and you can basically um basically you meditate and go through this emotional states thinking about you oh. or people close to you are dying and I, I was part of that um and everyone in the room was just crying and things but it does something to you because you all of a sudden realize something that will happen eventually to you or yeah. someone around you yeah um wow. and that might uh, shake you up so Hopefully people don't have to have that, but they can pretend, unfortunately, something like that um, to wake up for, um, before and start wow. reprioritizing life. Mm. Wow. You know, as someone, you with brain tumor, me with my father, and for people listening who, again, would like to not, would really like to have that achievement or that goal or that mm -hmm. destination without having the journey of something terrible. I, mm -hmm. I love I love this. This is this death meditation. It's and it, and it's again. I I think had my father not passed away, mm -hmm. I would I would have my answer to you or my comment would have been oh death meditation. Well, that's morbid. Why would I do that? That sounds yes. terrible. Yeah. But now I think oh that's a great idea, and and especially if if you can think like listening to our conversation. You think, well, let me see, what would I choose? I could do this death meditation and maybe I can have some sort of breakthrough or I can you know, wait for something terrible to happen, which doesn't sound mm -hmm. like fun at all. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's it a, also really amazing. prepares you to be more prepared. I mean, no one is prepared for something terrible like yeah. this. No one. Yeah. Nor for yourself, nor if, if it happens to a loved one. You will never be prepared. And I know that also people, and I had friends as well um, that passed away uh, where it was a long journey and you knew and they knew um, you will never be prepared. However, you can you can try to understand, take this in, to then make really the changes. And they don't have to be extreme because I would also say what you've done obviously is extreme, um, but you had to do that in that moment. And yeah. people can do that as well. It's extremely brave. Um, however, they if they want to start small, start with something like that. Put yourself, expose yourself to, to the thoughts of something shocking happen and then reevaluate, okay, what is it actually 
that I want in life. What And, and yeah. things change, you know, maybe you've thought about something already and now things change and you're afraid like, no, but I think I, th I said back then, this is what I want. This is what makes me happy. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. anymore. That's okay. Yeah. You will change. You will change. Yeah. You know, you mentioned money and money not necessarily yeah. making you happy. And my priorities have changed so much. Like recently, I've been doing, well, speaking of, of non-morbid things, I, <laughs> uh, for the past year, I've been taking a, a class in improv comedy. Yes. And, and for the past two months, I switched from improv comedy to stand-up comedy. And it, speaking of being out of your comfort zone, it's it's scary right it is i'm i'm literally on stage i was on, we were on stage for a live performance with paying audience for my first improv comedy amazing show. and i and sure it was scary but we had prepared you know in our class and we were students and we were prepared and so it's get, getting out of your comfort zone and i had i've always have always wanted to be on stage in some form i didn't really know what but, you know, with, again, with my father passing away, I, I think like, oh, yeah, I'll do that someday. Oh, when this happens, or when mm -hmm. I have enough money, or when I have enough time, or when I retire, or when XYZ, or when ABC. And when is that going to happen? When, when is that going to happen? And I had no date. I had nothing on my calendar that said, yeah. then I do, you know, improv comedy. Nope. And so what it took me, for me, this has really worked. I, a friend of mine is big into human design. Do you know much mm -hmm. about human design? Yeah. Not much, but I do. Okay, me either. But I do know that one of the things, one element of a character can be, it's called something like waiting to respond. And so it's not necessarily that I will be the instigator and I say, I'm going to go take the improv comedy class. So maybe that's possible. But the waiting to respond characteristic was a friend of mine said, hey, Bradley, hey, I, I'd like to do this improv comedy class. Do you want to join me? And I'm like, yes. And I thought that was my, my pathway in. And because, yes. hey, I've wanted this for a long time. I know I want it. I know it will make me happy. And I, I didn't do it. Why didn't I do it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I know my dad died. I now know I'm going to die someday. I know I should do this thing. And I didn't do the thing. And so this, this element of human design, again, which I also don't know much so much about, I, I'm going to send our recording to my friend because she'll be, she'll <laughs> like that I, that I talked about it, but then she would love to fill in here to say, for example, mm -hmm. this waiting to respond. So the reason I'm saying this is because here, Christine and I are inviting you dear watch dear viewer dear listener we're inviting you to go take a step you know as as she just said take a step maybe even i like how you said something like you said you go out of your comfort zone but you could also stay i think you said in your comfort zone but then yes. something different i like that that's yes. neat because it's a little less yeah. scary and the last thought that i want to give that you just mentioned People wait a long time and think, I do that when I'm retired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Without sounding too morbid, you don't know what's going to happen in between. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you yeah. don't know if you, I don't know, the world goes the way it goes. And don't wait until something you think will happen. Don't wait, oh, I'll do that when I'm 50. I'll do that when I'm 40 or something. Just yeah. do it now. If there's something that you really desire doing, do it now. Because you won't regret the things you've done, but you will regret yeah. the things you haven't done, yeah. like they say. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit, again, I just want to come back to formula. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about, I, you don't have to uh, give away any secrets of the book. But can, can, <laughs> that's can <you> okay. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the formula or what can we expect? And from what I'm yes, already hearing from you, I really like that you have very practical tips and advice. And it seems like very doable. Like you're yes. not saying, you know, you have to move to Bali and, and become a monk. <laughs> and have no, a, not mm. anymore anyway. I think Bali has done its share. It's still, <laughs> I think, lovely, but uh, the hype might have been gone down That's a bit. Funny. 
um, yeah, yeah. and tourism, unfortunately, <laughs> is to destroying Bali as well. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> um, on a positive, happy side, <laughs> um, let's talk about the happiness formula. So there's things. So I um, I think one very important thing to understand is whatever you want uh, to do uh, and whatever, wherever you, your journey starts for happiness, you have to start somewhere. You have to get an understanding what happiness means to you. So that's the first yeah. thing because happiness yeah. is different things to different people. You have to understand that joy is not happiness and happiness is not joy. Joy is a fleeting moment and lovely and our life hopefully is filled with joy for moments. Happiness is a long lasting contentment of your human being let's say so just understanding that already um will um will make it easier for you probably so i would invite you to think about what does happiness mean to you discover your values and know that knowing is not enough you have to take action and that's why i'm saying another thing is um that we like to manipulate ourselves <laughs> for whatever reason, traumas in the past, or we think we don't deserve happiness. Um, so work on that. Look into okay, do you actually think you deserve being that happy? And if you if you say no, then I will look deeper into that. Um, why you think wow. that is? Because otherwise, you manipulate yourself always and will never reach that happiness. Also, I would say. Um, that's that's a good point actually reaching happiness when when do you reach that is there an end point probably not yeah it's a lifelong yeah. learning it's a lifelong thing um, that people want to achieve but I think understanding that it's probably not a journey with an end stop uh, will also help and accept um, oh. and then I mean there's so many things uh, let me can I ask um, you a question yes please you because could you give an example? I really like how you have the definitions. I didn't really know them so clearly of mm -hmm. joy and happiness. Can mm -hmm. you give examples? Like, so you said joy is more fleeting. Exactly. So joy is, for example, we're having this conversation. It, I really enjoy that. And oh, joy right. has already the, the word okay. joy in, in it. Right, um, right. It's it's moment that give you a good feeling, maybe some memories that you're creating with people, um, maybe oh. um, staying close, maybe a hug. Uh, maybe you, you got a certificate that you were learning um, for or something. So things that make you jump up and down, that make your heart jump. Um, in okay. that moment so okay. you, that's basically joy because it's attached to something that's just happening in that moment happiness is more okay i'm i'm happy in general in life it doesn't have to be attached okay. to a specific moment or thing that just happened it's more contentment and yeah i'm, I'm good i'm i'm healthy i'm happy i'm of course, we have all of bad days. I'm not going to say I'm the happiest person in life. I think I'm the, one of the luckiest people in life because I was misdiagnosed with brain tumor and not really uh, having a brain tumor. But um, so that that would be the main difference. So one is more attached to something that happens that we enjoy doing that gives us that joy in that moment. And happiness is more like a, a, a way of life. A way of seeing things in general, being a bit more optimistic, maybe smile at people and spread kindness and things like that. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. That's really helpful. And also, it's so silly, but you're right. Enjoy the the verb. Enjoy. Yeah. Joy I just made that up. Now. Actually, never. I never <laughs> realized that. But whilst <laughs> I was saying that, I was like, that is actually true. It has to yeah. work in it. Yeah. That's great. I really like that. <laughs> Wow. Okay. We had said we were going to, I'm try. I try to stick to time, even though my challenge here is that I just feel like we could talk just forever. I'm really enjoying <laughs> talking with you and it's just, well, well, we can have a part two at some point if we yeah. like. <laughs> you know what I almost said, and I'm not kidding. I didn't make it up or whatever. <laughs> I almost said, I, I said, it's such a joy to talk with you. There you go. So that would be an example of like this moment right now, this is like a joyous moment. I'm that enjoying makes me happy. the moment, right? It makes me happy that okay. you enjoy that. <laughs> so a joyous moment. I'm enjoying the moment. And so that makes me happy. So is it like, I'm very visual, right? So mm -hmm. 
like I and I'm right now I'm seeing like and again remember I'm I'm so sorry people but I'm like a math guy and I literally <laughs> think sometimes I think in like line graphs and yeah. charts and stuff I mm -hmm. know it's terrible it's a sickness but uh, I think of like joy as the, the little graphs mm -hmm. like joy 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 a bunch of little graphs but then mm -hmm. it's it's building on the bigger uh, background of like again I, I really do think in graphs so it's like a shaded the shaded um, area of the graph and mm -hmm. that's the happiness so the little joy is increasing the the, the happiness would that be for kind of accurate or that possible? is uh, that is for sure accurate and then there's lots of other things that um, go into that um, okay. And again, we can talk about these for, yeah. for another five hours, but yeah. for sure, joyful <laughs> moments in your life will feed your happiness state, let's say. That one of the things, okay. being kind to yourself, spreading kindness to others, creating moments with other people, doing things with other people. I know a lot of people like being by themselves as well, like hermits, and that's great, yeah. and they're happy, but they see once they do something with other people, it makes them even happier. Um, okay. And then there's lots of lots of things that you can do to to um, lengthen these joyful moments. But again, it's probably getting out of proportion now, time wise. Yeah. Um, more than happy yeah. to have another conversation. <laughs> or every anyone who's listening to that, feel free to connect with me and and say, Christine, I I think that made me that was joyful to listen yeah, to your conversation. Yeah. Let me know. <laughs> you know. Okay. So here's a here's a, a, a maybe a wrap up. A comment and uh, right now we're having a conversation we're on zoom it's afternoon we're both in europe and we're connecting via zoom and as i said i'm really enjoying this and i i could have uh, recorded a, a video of just me talking a monologue you could have recorded a monologue uh, you know a presentation whatever that's that's fine nothing wrong with that but here's my suggestion for people to maybe get out of their comfort zone. And it, again, you and I are both writers and writing is also like a monologue, right? We're, we're writing and people are uh, consuming what, what we offer. So here's my, my challenge to get out of your comfort zone. Ha have a conversation. And in fact, if you really want the extra credit bonus points, like start up a YouTube channel or a podcast, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't need the craziest, fanciest. I'm, we're both, I think, I don't know, you, maybe you have a better camera. I think you have a better camera than I do. I'm on my laptop. You know, I don't have the fanciest equipment in the world I, because I'm a true believer in just the idea of creating something because honestly, this conversation has brought me joy, which increases my happiness. And I just learned in the past half an hour with you how how I can build my happiness through points of joy and other elements, I understand. But that really made uh, made it more clear for me. And that's because we're out of our comfort zones and we're having a conversation. We we just met, you know, we met uh, last time we talked and this is could be out of the comfort zone for a lot of people. But I mm -hmm. think these sorts of discussions are can really, you and I have joy and I hope that we share joy to those who are listening and watching. So there's my challenge from Mr. Like, go write a book guy. Yes. And uh, remember, a smile is contagious. So, so yeah, even smiling, yeah. that might be another challenge. Smile at a stranger uh, and see oh, what nice. happens. Wow. <laughs> Great. Where if can they people start find talking, you? Run. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you and your books and your Creative Startup Academy? Where can people find you online? Uh, the best way is creativestartupacademy.com. All one word. There you have all my links to the socials in the footer. There you have all the links to the books and things like that. Also, the happiness. Right. Love it. I really like Creative Startup Academy. I mean, I like all three Thank of you. those individual elements and all together. This is really fantastic. So Thank you. creativestartupacademy.com. Christine Michaelis. It was great to have you. And you know what? Let's do that. Let's just have this as part one because we have so much to talk about. Let's mm -hmm. hop on another Zoom in, uh, in when when next you have your next when book next. or you have your next uh, <laughs> next whatever. I don't even care what yes. it is. Let's just um, hop on and we'll share and create some joy 
and um, bring joy and happiness to others. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. (laughs) Yeah, And thank you so much for being here. And thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm here at least every week. You know, I, I can't not talk about this, but I think that's what helps me. That's what gives me joy is also... I have a deadline. I ha- I do this every single week, whether I feel like it or not. Mm-hmm. And if I even if I'm in a place where I don't feel like doing it, when I do it, I get more joy. Like right now, I'm actually tired. <laughs> I, just I know drove exactly for an what hour. you mean. Yeah. And and I said, no, but we have a call. It's four o'clock. We're gonna do it. And we're doing it. And even though I was tired and didn't feel like it, it has just talking, having this conversation. It's brought both of us up and hopefully people listening and watching too. So thank you, Christine, for bringing me up here and for bringing everybody else up. So thanks again. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.